President Trump's announcement on Monday will kick off a contentious nomination process that's already fired up both sides ahead of the aisle and ahead of November's midterm elections. For more, we're going to be joined right now by Fox News contributors DeRoy Murdoch and Doug Schoen. And DeRoy, let me start with you. Isn't this all about nothing? The Democrats cannot stop the nomination. End of discussion, right? If they get uh, manage to pull aside or uh, pull to the side uh, Susan Collins or Lisa Murkowski, they might be able to do it. Um, also, the absence of John McCain uh, adds to the whole uh, the, the difficult math here. But I think that uh, more than likely, the uh, whoever is nominated by President Trump is going to be nominated. And to me, the big question is: Will the Democrats have a, an intelligent, rational discussion about this and talk about their legitimate differences with that nominee, or will he be hearing about uh, Hitler, Nazi, Auschwitz, all this awful stuff like we did with the uh, border controversy? And if they overplay their hand and uh, you know block traffic. Uh, break windows, as we've seen going on at the okay. Nebraska GOP headquarters. And if they have that sort of approach to this, I think it'll make it even harder for them to make any intelligent case why this nominee should be opposed. Doug, is there a way the Democrats can handle this and come out, uh, for lack of a better term, because people in politics keep score, come out the winners and still approve the president's nominee? Well, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure this is a winners and losers. I think there is a hope that we get a nominee who's not an absolutist on the uh, Roe and Wade and on health care. And Brett Kavanaugh, based on his prior decisions, is certainly very conservative, but he has respected uh, uh, precedent. And I would say that I hope we get somebody like that, and then perhaps we can have a consensus around a nominee rather than having a difficult fight. I agree with DeRoy that fighting is not going to help anybody, but hopefully as a country we can come together and it's not winning and losing, it's what's right for the country. Okay, but what, what, what likelihood do you put on that actually happening, that people come together? This is going to be I the think same if it's Kavanaugh, we could if, if it's Kavanaugh, we could get two or three Democrats voting for him, and we'd probably get most, if not all, the Republicans. I think that's a better outcome than Coney Barrett, no matter what football team you Doesn't, root for. DeRoy, but, but won't, won't the Democrats, at least the, the, the ultra-left of the Democrats, those who call themselves Democrat socialists, won't they be in an uproar no matter who the nominee is? Absolutely. Well, they'll be in an uproar no matter what President Trump does. If he, if he leaves the seat empty, they'll scream. Whoever he, he appoints, they'll, they'll complain about uh, and that, again, goes back to the whole question of how shrill is this going to be, uh, this, this uh, uh, nomination fight, whether it's something that's handled intelligently or if it's the kind of, you know, resist and get in the streets and, and, and scream and yell like we've seen the Democrats behaving over the last few months, uh, really to their detriment. Doug, I, I wanted to ask you about this. Do you think that this could backfire if the Democrats play this incorrectly and, and don't heed your advice about a unifying discussion? Uh, and that we see uh, there's this movement, the walk away movement, uh, the person who launched that in New York. I did verify, by the way, he is a hairstylist. I confirmed his license number with the State <laughs> Division of Licensing. Uh, and we can get into a whole issue about regulatory, you know, come stuff later. But don't they risk chasing away middle of the road Democrats if they, they become too aggressive? Uh, I, I, I agree. I mean, if they walk away, if they don't discuss, or if they literally and metaphorically, as DeRoy said, break windows, it's against the party's interests, as is democratic socialism. Look, I'm interested in going forward constructively. The only point I would disagree with is Merrick Garland is a democratic centrist, and I underscore centrist. He's a very good jurist. It's too bad he wasn't selected and confirmed, but that being said, we got to go forward as a nation and as a people, and I hope we can go forward constructively. DeRoy, the, the criticism you hear, though, within the Democratic Party is that they're not tough enough. What the issue that Doug just brought up with uh, Justice Garland uh, gets to the issue right there. I mean, the Democrats couldn't do anything at that point, but, you know, their base, at least some on the base, are saying fight, 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 regardless of the outcome. Well, they keep saying that, but, you know, I think what American people uh, are learning over the, over the last few weeks and few months is that, does, like I say, this is not your father's Democrat Party. It's not your mother's Democrat Party. This is not the party of uh, JFK or LBJ or even the party of Bill Clinton and Doug Schoen. Uh, this is a party where you see people running folks out of... Uh, uh, restaurants, you see again all these attacks and vandalism. You see people wearing Make America Great Again hats are getting beaten in the streets. I mean, this is not what you'd expect a normal, uh, constitutionally focused uh, political party to act like. And the more they behave like this, I think the more they imperil themselves. Well, let me, let me ask you this and then we'll close with Doug. Uh, the majority, let's just Roe v. Wade. Now, nobody's going to get up there as a nominee and say, I intend to overturn Roe v. Wade. That would be political suicide. But previous writings may indicate that's where they're going. And yet the majority of Americans polled do not want that. That's, that's settled law, according to the majority of Americans. Will the nominee, will the president listen to that? 
Uh, they might. I mean, I, I think the whole uh, uh, protocol has been not to ask the nominee specifically whether that person would vote or not vote uh, to uh, uphold or overturn Roe versus Wade. What I found amazing about this debate so far is how the Democrats talk about abortion, 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 abortion. There are other things they could bring up, civil rights, the environment, uh, what's going to happen with Obamacare, etc. And yet we hear about abortion nonstop as if that were the only issue facing the republic. I find that extraordinary. Doug, uh, when, you know, what DeRoy just said about Obamacare, conservatives might be a little bit angry with Mr. Kavanaugh. Some of them blame him for opening the door for the justices ruling uh, in regards to Obamacare being attacked. The mandate. Yeah, well, that, that's one of the reasons why I would, of the short list, uh, lean in his direction. Look, he's not ideal for me. I prefer Garland, but that's not going to happen. I just don't want absolutists on anything on the court. The court was supposed to be uh, for jurists, not ideologues, and I hope we can stick to that. Well, DeRoy, thank you very much. Doug, thank you. Thank you, you say it's a, a court sure. for jurists, but it looks like it might become a court for Ivy Leaguers. <laughs> that's another discussion, by the well, way. If you want I'm to drain the Ivy swamp. I'm a lawyer, so that's not bad. I'll, I'll take that. I went to my, Harvard. My, and my we dad have a pretty is good too. football team, too. Yeah, that's I'm talking about right. arguing at dinner all the time. Georgetown, that's what I say. I would, I would go with Georgetown. <laughs> I'd go with Syracuse for that matter. Yeah, go I Orange. I would beat Georgetown in football. <laughs> On that note, both of you, thank you. Thank you.